while designing any system there are certain uh, components that are used again and again and, and that are used extensively in most of the systems so we will look at some of the major building blocks for uh, designing our system so let's see so one of the major building block is a load balancer and more or less we will use it in most of the systems that we will design then uh, we, we have databases key value store domain name systems content delivery networks distributed cache message queue rate limiter blob store and many more but uh, we will not go into details of all of them uh, so we will see them uh, as we use them so let's see what is a load balancer so the first one load balancer it's used to distribute incoming requests to a pool of servers so that uh, there is not too much of uh, stress on any particular server or if uh, any server is down the load balancer should be able to uh, detect that and route the request appropriately to other servers which are working so let's think of this as the load balancer and there's an incoming request or a bunch of them and the job of a load balancer is to distribute them evenly across different servers then we have databases and we will use almost all the time we will need some database to store retrieve update or delete data so this is a core component of any system design then uh, we have key value stores it's also used to store data only thing is that it uh, stores data in the form of key, key value pairs unlike relational databases so these are non-relational databases and store data in key value pair next is domain name system these are used to design hierarchical and distributed naming system for computers and these computers should be connected with each other over internet using some internet protocol then we have content delivery networks so most often uh, these are distributed globally in different regions and whenever any request comes uh, these CDNs or content delivery networks can serve the request so these are mainly storing the popular web pages images videos so that when a request comes it it's present in uh, their cache and they are able to serve the request so this uh, reduces load on uh, uh, data centers and also reduce latency since these requests are handled uh, locally within some nearby region so it reduces latency and improves the experience next we have distributed cache so it's very similar to a traditional cache but only thing is that uh, here the memory used to uh, store those elements in the cache is distributed across multiple nodes so uh, these can span over multiple nodes as you can see in the illustration so there are different nodes and uh, then uh, these are connected to databases and these are spanning across multiple nodes we will see details of all of these later it's just a high level view of all of these building blocks next is message queue so many a times uh, there are multiple requests coming but uh, uh, we are not able to our system is not able to handle them asynchronously all at once so whenever any uh, request comes so we call them producer so when any request come or a bunch of them these are stored in the message queue and these will be processed but may not be immediately so whenever any worker is free or a consumer in this case we call it so a uh, consumer are different workers that are uh, serving some other requests so as soon as some worker gets free they pick these requests uh, from the queue or uh, process those requests and then delete those requests from the queue requests or me messages so this is how message queue works then we have a rate limiter so uh, there may be uh, many incoming requests for certain services so it, it may be also a misuse of the service so one of the goals of rate limiter is to throttle the incoming requests uh, based on certain limit that is defined for our system 
and it can be used as a defensive mechanism to protect overuse of services so you can think of it as a funnel so ma many requests are coming in and only requests are defined by the limit of the system is served or processed then we have blob store so these are generally used for unstructured data for example video files or any other multimedia or binary files so these were some of the major building blocks uh, of a system design of course there are many more but we will study them as and when we use them thank you